Good day, Africa, and welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks. And AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities Headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. My name is Kwesi Sam, and I am the host for AU Talks. And today, we are bringing you another exciting edition, a very insightful discussion on academic corruption. And we are taking the scientific approach in curbing academic corruption in African universities. Don't forget that you can join us via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. I'll go for a short break. And when I return, I will let you know my guest and the show will continue. Stay tuned. Botswana Accountancy College is a business school that was set up over two decades ago to contribute towards the human capital development in Botswana and beyond. BAC has over 20 years diversified its product portfolio to offer accounting, business, leisure, management and ICT related programs at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, as well as consultancy short courses to augment professional skills. In achieving this diversification, the college has partnered with UK-based universities of Durban Sunderland and Sheffield Hallam University, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA, Beaker, AAT, ACCA, CIA, Cisco, Microsoft, SAP, ESA, and SIPS to allow our graduates to have a globally recognized qualification and be globally competitive. To learn more about BAC, contact us on 3953062 in Gaborone or 2410558 in Francistown or visit our website on www.bac.ac. Also, you can visit our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. BAC, celebrating over 20 years of creating business leaders. If you just tuned in, you are still watching AU Talks brought to you by the Association of African Universities. And today we are discussing academic corruption and the scientific approaches in solving or curbing academic corruption in African higher education. And to help us do the discussion, we have one of our finest experts on the continent, and he is a lecturer at the University of Professional Studies, Accra, Ghana, and then also an expert in academic corruption. And we are privileged to be hosting Mr. Fred Awa. And I have a lot to say about this gentleman because he is a former Secretary General of All Africa Student Union as well. So he understands the issue and what academic corruption is. You are welcome to AU Talks, Mr. Fred Awa. Thank you very much, Sam. Great. I'm so much happy to see you once again after Egypt, where we had another beautiful discussion on the same um, topic. But today we are moving to a different dimension and we are looking at the scientific approaches or the place of science in curbing academic corruption. Gone were the days where when you're writing examinations, you have human beings standing on your neck making sure that students don't cheat and uh, everything is orderly. But you have a different insight into curbing academic corruption and you think ICT technology um, resources are best in solving such approaches. Tell us more about that. Well, okay, times back, um, every form of academic related corrupt act mm. was uh, kept through using, or attempts were being made to keep such through using analog means. Okay. Analog means here meaning that using non-scientific modes of curbing such incidences. Mm. You just spoke about the issue of uh, invigilation. Mm. Times back if examinations were written, you had to see it. Sometimes in the case of West African Examination Council, you see armed policemen mm. or unarmed invigilators. These are all analog means of trying to stop students from cheating. However, times, times have passed and there are new models that are scientific based mm. in curbing in all forms of academic corruption, which we'll be outlining in this particular discussion. But to give to give this discourse an intellectual flair, mm. it is important for us to look at some theoretic underpinnings okay. of the concepts of academic corruption and how they apply to some of the scientific models that we have selected for this discourse. Mm. So if you allow me, I uh, first want to talk about the social learning theory. Mm. Now, the social learning theory is uh, a psychological theory of deviance, mm -hmm. meaning that people make conscious efforts to deviate from the normal no, thing. Absolutely. So whilst mm. you and your colleagues are learning to pass examinations, their deviancy is related to learning to see how to get uh, a po. Uh, no, a po is in the Ghanaian sense, but mm. uh, uh, leaked examination papers okay. or see how to smuggle 
leaked examination questions into the exam room. So you realize that it is a behavior that they have learned, but not in a positive way, mm. because learning would actually give you the edge to be able to study well to do that which is expected of you to excel in the examination so whilst others are learning others are also learning but in a manner that would cheat the system mm. and this comes directly under the social learning, learning theory, theory. Mm. okay so another that we will look is the concept of quid pro quo mm. this is latin and all it, it simply means exchanging something for something and this is very related to sexually transmitted grades mm. Or sex for Max. Now, in that instance, you would realize that um, a lecturer may make sexual advances to a student in return for what? Grades. So, mm. so that is the issue of quid pro quo, exchanging something for something. Mm. So this is another theory in literature that explains the growth of uh, the growth of uh, academic corruption mm. within the African sub uh, African region in the issues of what higher education. education. Yeah, mm. there is also the theory of the bad apple. Mm. Now, the bad apple theory simple. It's very simple. It says that in society there are people whose behavior would be inconsistent with the norms of society, mm -hmm. meaning that whilst everybody is thinking of uh, studying and passing exam, there are a few who would think who that are smarter than the system. Absolutely. Mm. It is okay to cheat. It is okay to bribe a lecturer or it is okay to use somebody's material without citing. Mm. Okay. Then we also have the public choice theory. Okay. And we, that is the fourth theory that I've outlined for my study, mm. the basis of which we are having this discussion today. Now, the public choice theory says that an average person like you and I, the... The, the, the motivation for doing right or wrong would be the benefit that the person would get. Mm -hmm. So that if you want to kill Fred, for instance, you are thinking, killing Fred is not a, a good thing. But you ask yourself, but yes, but if I kill Fred, perhaps I can inherit his car. Mm. I can inherit. So the motivation for killing is not the fact that you don't know that it's wrong. But it is the fact that it will inure to what? Your benefit. Mm -hmm. And this has been borrowed into uh, the literature of higher education, especially in the case of academic corruption. Mm -hmm. Students know that it is wrong to cheat. Lecturers also do know that it's wrong to cheat. Mm -hmm. But of course, they are looking at the benefit of cheating. If I cheat, I will make a D. I will rather make what? An A. If I hack into the university system, it is not a good thing. But at least I can change my class from third class to what? first class so that which informs the position of the student to mm. cheat is the issue of public choice the choice that any person would make would make okay <laughs> all right mm. so these are the theoretical underpinnings to the study that you and i are discussing today so um mr wa um that, that, that is a brilliant submission mm. but let's look at it from this angle mm. why do you think students or um, people would engage in all manner of academic corruption or practices that we think are, are corrupt in terms of examination or in terms of fulfilling a requirement for certification in our paper cabin student related academic corruption in sub-saharan africa mm. myself and abdullah the paper is still in press at okay. the journal for business studies mm. we have posited that a number of factors account for this the first we identified is that within the african region there seem to be a lot of um, support for certification rather than education. Mm. So a lot of um, students want to get certificates rather than having the knowledge, skill, and attitude the full education. That, yeah, that is mm. expected of them to, uh, to perform in industry. So this is one of the issues that triggers academic corruption. Mm. People want to get certi good certificates at all costs to meet the expectations of what? industry especially in the area of recru mm -hmm. recruitment also parents within our region although the trends are changing also would always want their children to have the best of grace mm -hmm. so they seem to always want to put pressure on their uh, their walls irrespective of their intellectual capac uh, capacities mm -hmm. they do not make adjustments and room to the fact that we have different IQs and everyone's child cannot make A's. Mm -hmm. so to yield to these pressures students usually will look look for unethical ways of what getting their okay. grades mm -hmm. now one other thing that has uh, heightened this situation is 
moral de uh, decadence mm. that to the extent that lecturers compromise their ethical uh, standards, st standards mm. by sleeping with students, taking money with, uh, from students, or giving questions ahead of time to students in order for students to get what? Good grades. Mm. Now, even talking about lecturers, they also get in, involved in academic what? Corruption. Dis mm. Dishonest practices. Mm. Sometimes they, uh, they publish in uh, predatory journals. It is also important to inform that sometimes some colleagues of ours borrow works of others without what? Properly citing. Mm. So there are a myriad. Or publish work done by students as well. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. But also, even in the instance of working, by publishing work done by students, it is supposed to be with the consent of the, the student. students. That mm. is, if the lecturer supervises the student. Because mm. if you supervise a thesis, you are seen as an integral part of what? The work. The work. Mm. So you do not publish it as your sole work because you did it together with what? The a student. team. Okay. okay. So, uh, a myriad of those factors. So, these are just a few that I can highlight for, for this discussion. Great. Now, let's move into uh, the business of the day. Okay. That has to do with the scientific approaches in, in kind of curbing academic corruption. I mean, people are using all sorts of methods, but still, we still hear news and hear here and there in our universities, in our countries of academic corruption. You are proposing a scientific approach to um, solving some of these problems. What are the key um, interventions that you have? Well, the interventions are many, and actually they are borrowed from best practices within what? The African region, okay. all right, and elsewhere. It is important to inform that times back, one of the key issues that bordered on academic corruption was cheating during examinations. Mm. Now, and traditionally, our examination bodies or institutions of higher learning had one key way of curbing this physically bringing in invigilators mm. and sometimes armed men, including the police. I can cite the West African Examination Council when we were still younger. Mm. Now, this model was where they physically watched while students wrote examinations. And if a student was caught cheating, it was expected that this invigilator would what? Get to know. However, there seemed to be a gradual dis departure mm. from this system. And I can give examples of Aseshi University and the Lawe Open University College, both in Ghana. Now, students write examination under an environment where there are CCTV cameras. Mm. So there is no need for anyone to physically sit and invigilate what? The students. The student, okay. This is a product of science. It is not analog. It is not like time past when we used to have men and let me further inform that this issue of physical invigilators standing and watching students sometimes gets students intimidated mm -hmm. take for instance the one who has phobia for the military or the police, the police and you okay. have an armed man with guns standing and watching you tendencies are that things that you might have learned or rehearsed mm -hmm. or were taught that you remembered this intimidating presence could let you what forget some of them absolutely mm -hmm. so the concept of CCTV cameras is an invention by science that has come to help Africa's higher education mm. in curbing the, cons uh, the, the rising incidence of academic corruption mm -hmm. within the African region. Now, let me um, inform further that times back, especially with online examinations, it was easy for you to write examinations for, for someone me, yeah. uh, because there were no identifiers. Mm -hmm. But now there are biometric verifications okay that i sit behind the the laptop or whichever device that i, I am sitting behind mm -hmm. it is able to identify that this is fred our even if my identical twin brother sits in there are identifiers that makes me different from him mm. okay so that system of cheating where people sat in examinations for others science has come to solve it through what the issues of verification mm. and that is another milestone that the African higher education uh, uh, community mm. has borrowed from and can still what increase the borrowing to mm. ensure that the incidence of academic corruption gets minimal I should inform that in the in the issues of a uh, quid pro quid code mm -hmm. relating with sex for marks yeah. uh, where uh, lecturers exchange sex for marks technologies like the mobile phone has helped. In the recent past, the inc incidence of uh, sex for marks that was reported in Nigeria, 
it was the mobile phone of what? The lady. That the lady captured. captured. Mm. It was the same in the Kenyan incidents. Okay? So both lecturers could not deny that they tried sleeping with what? The female mm. students for marks. Okay? To the effect that the le the in the in the in the footage, the lady was like, I would record you if mm. you don't stop it. The lecturer was not what? Yielding. So evidences were products of what? The mobile phone. Okay. Now, assuming in the times that we had analog phones that did not have video facilities, of course, this wouldn't have been evidential. Mm. But of course, today, because of mobile, tech, mobile phone technology, it has become easy for us to what? Mm. Curb academic corruption related to evidences. Okay. Yes. So these are a few. I think we have outlined uh, three. And yeah. then also even I should, I should just add mm. this, that uh, in recent times, time, the human factor is also gradually reducing. Reducing, sure. This morning I took an online examination. At the end of the period, what I scored was a reflection, a true reflection of my inputs. Okay. It cannot be compromised. When the answer is A, there is no human being behind the system who would say, oh, Fred Awa is my what? Friend, so I'm going to change it to be no. Mm. All right? So the online marking system mm -hmm. has also come to what? Midi uh, mitigate Midi, okay. uh, the rising incidences of academic corruption within the African education high space. Okay. So when you talk about academic corruption, I believe it's, it's broader. It goes beyond examination. Absolutely. But we'll go for a short break, and when we return, we'll look at uh, beyond examination, which other areas can, can we look at? All right. Viewers, we are still watching AU Talks on AU TV, and we are still discussing academic corruption and how scientific approaches can solve um, help solve um, or curb academic corruption in Africa. Stay tuned. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back. Dumela ma Africa amat. Magadi ni mose. Ola todush. Bonjour. Naga iswa. Kuya da. Salibon nani lonke. Muri bwanji. Hello. We are Africa University. Africa University has brought the U.S. to me where I couldn't go, and now is taking Africa to the world. And I am Africa. As a community of diverse cultures and languages, Africa University is passionate about moving the agenda of Pan-Africanism. Africa University, the dream is alive. I'm studying medical laboratory sciences on the STEM scholarship. Africa University has the best malaria research lab in the entire country. So if you're interested in lab sciences or conducting any sort of research, then Africa University is the place to be. Africa University is the school of hope in the value of dreams. Come and join me. We're going to make Africa better than before. You might have not been to all the African countries. Come to Africa University and see Africa happening every day. An institution that offers a world-class education system. Are you thinking of being a global person? thinking of enhancing your business and leadership skills, why not choose Africa University? As a working mother and a wife, through one of its many flexible programs, Africa University has afforded me an opportunity to pursue my master's degree in intellectual property. As former SRC president, Africa University sharpened my leadership skills, a university that rewards excellency and hard working. Being a Catholic nun, I came to Africa University with a lot of mixed feelings. I was scared, a bit hesitant, and wondering how was I going to manage in a United Methodist institution. But you know what? I've experienced a vibrant, God-fearing, ecumenical community. Welcome to Africa University. Sign up today and come and work with some of Africa's finest young talent. Whatever your background or field of interest, you will feel right at home. Africa University has a vibrant and multicultural student body, offering you a range of facilities, both in and outside the classroom. Our dining hall provides for more than 11 different menus with cultural diversity. Should you need accommodation, Africa University caters for a number of residence options. Whatever your level and whatever your sport, at Africa University you'll find plenty of opportunities to stay active. Our excellent sports and fitness facilities will help you stay on top of your game 
in an environment that promotes a proactive approach to sport, recreation, health and well-being. Every year the university gets multi-talented athletes from among the student body and staff. Their sporting backgrounds are as varied as their nationalities. Some have represented their countries and have received awards in the process. Enroll with us for our March or August intakes. Africa University, investing in Africa's future. Welcome back from the break. You are still watching AU Talks and we are hosting Mr. Fredawa, who is an international expert in academic corruption. And we are still looking at how scientific approaches and methods can help solve or curb academic corruption in Africa. And so, Mr. Awa, before we left for the break, we were looking at the, the examination aspect, which we believe that is just one set of um, academic corruption. In terms of um, grading, mm -hmm. in terms of also um, writing, Okay, theses, dissertations, and others, and I think there are others. How can we still use scientific approaches to curb some of the corrupt practices that um, happen? Okay, so now let us establish because we you've you've uh, you've opened the discussion mm. on the broadness of academic corruption. Okay, it is not limited. All right, academic corruption simply refers to any act mm. by a, an academic stakeholder that gives him an undue advantage, advantage over right. the other. Mm. Okay, so in this regard, other forms may come up. Let me take classroom-related academic corrupt practices by lecturers. Mm. Maybe we can find examples. Mm -hmm. I am supposed to lecture three hours, okay? Then I get in, I'm supposed to lecture from one o'clock to three o'clock. I get in at 1.20 and two o'clock I am out of what? The class. Mm. It is an academically corrupt practice because I'm supposed to teach for three hours to earn my salary. So if I go in late and I exit early, it means I would have done about one and a half hours out of the three hours mm. and I'm out of class. How, how, how does it become corruption? Because I know examination programs are not static. They are dynamic. The lecturer has the opportunity to kind of um, change or modify. How does that become a corrupt practice? It is a corrupt practice because if a lecturer is mm. supposed, the, the university in its wisdom, has scheduled a timetable. Okay. Mr. Fredawa, you are supposed to be lecturing public administration from 8 a.m. To, 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 to maybe 10, okay. 10 a.m. Mm. It means that the university knows that by your course outline and your syllabus, when you get in, it is three hours that can let you what? cover the syllabus. Mm. So it is expected that you will get there at the right time okay. and exit at the right time. Okay. So if you shortchain it by getting in late and exiting early. It means that you've taken some part of the university's what? Okay. Time for yourself. So it means without the consent of the management or the, the student, absolutely. then it's corrupt. Okay. It's corrupt. Mm. Okay. And it is regular within our environs. Mm. It has become accepted by the lecturers themselves. Students also have access. Oh, the lecturer is coming. He will go soon. Mm -hmm. But it is academic corruption. Okay. Now, tell, now, these ones, times back, we couldn't manage them. Or we're managing them with what? orthodox means mm. or analog, analog means, means okay. and in that instance because there's a human factor there can be compromises so class rep when did the lecturer come in you say one o'clock when did he leave four o'clock because mm. he's a friend to the lecturer but now there are swipe ins okay that is a product of what technology sure swipe in such that when you come in fred our swipe the shoes he entered enter the at eight o'clock mm. when i close i swipe out I entered, I closed at what, 10. So three hours have been what? Covered. Mm. So that is a product of what? Using ICT. Now, you see, the dynamics of uh, academic corruption are varied and wide. So there are normal day-to-day -day academic issues in the, in, in, in the universities that we overlook, that we think are not practices That's, that are okay. corrupt. Take, mm. for instance, the issue of uh, course outlines. Mm. If you are a lecturer, your responsibility in your first class is to introduce yourself, get to know the students, and also introduce the course, course outline. Sure. The course outline. Mm. So if you get into a class, you don't give a course outline. Then throughout the semester, you have been lecturing without a course outline. It is an academically what? Corrupt, Corrupt practice. practice. Good. All right. Mm. Now, the question is, persons far who may want to ask questions are, how does it constitute academic corruption? There may be 10 topics on the course outline. Okay, if the students are not aware because you have not given them the course outline, you may lecture only seven mm. within the semester, meaning you have six 
three, three, three. That's six credit hours what? Nine credit hours to yourself, mm. which you have not accounted for. Okay. Meanwhile, you are being paid for such. Then it becomes an academically corrupt practice. Okay. And times back, the question would be, class rep, has your lecturer given you the course outline? And if the class rep is your, is, is, is the lecturer can say mm. yes. But of course, there are models now that curtails that. Mm. Okay. So on a number of university websites, it is a requirement to upload your course outline for what? The okay. semester. Mm. And this is not analog. It is the support of science and ICT. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Okay. So for every academically corrupt practice that pertains in Africa's higher education space, there are models okay. that can help us to what? Curb it or at least minimize the effects. Okay. So what about instances where the lecturer swipes in eight, mm -hmm. but then... And then also swipes in at nine, mm -hmm. meaning that he was on time. Mm -hmm. How do we check what happens in the classroom in terms of, is he delivering the content? Okay. What is the classroom engagement? Mm -hmm. Even with the course outline, mm -hmm. if I upload the course outline mm -hmm. online and then we know it's covering 10 topics, mm -hmm. how will you ensure that the, the lecturer is able to use all the, 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 if it is nine weeks, is able to cover all the topics? Okay. Now, the, it's easy. One. If a lecturer is not teaching well, it means that he's deficient in the skills, knowledge, mm. and attitude. That's, he needs okay. to be trained. Absolutely. But mm. to be specific to your question, now a number of universities do appraisal of their lecturers. Mm. And it is not university management that does it. It's the students. Mm. Students are in the classroom with the lecturer throughout his, the period of what? Teaching and teaching learning. Teaching and learning. Mm. So the student assesses him on professionalism, delivery style, mm -hmm content and all of that my university does it my students are, they assess me and all other lecturers almost every semester mm -hmm. and it is a product of what technology and ict do, do they do it online or still the, no, they no, bring no, the paper online. pencil no, no, okay no. they do it online oh okay it's web-based mm. so technology has come to make academic corruption issues minimal mm. and the earlier african universities log on to it to, to, to minimize the rising effects of academic corruption, I think that the better for our continent. So what happens to publications, um, thesis writing, dissertations, mm -hmm. you know, the issues of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. So how does the scientific approaches also come in? I know there are a lot of... Uh, Softwares. Um, yes. Yeah, now we have Turnitin, for mm -hmm. instance, so that if I am supervising uh, uh, an undergrad thesis and then the student does all of the writing, I guide him through, then he brings the work. Mm. I need to put it into a software okay. that will tell me, ah, this particular work, I think that 10 or 20 percent of it was borrowed. Plagiarized. Okay. Good. So I get my student close. I tell, ah, let's relook at this. Mm. I think that you borrowed from somewhere. It is not right to borrow without telling where you borrowed it from. Mm. Okay. So one, you either find the appropriate sources or two, you find alternative sources and get this part of it out mm -hmm. so that the work can what be a true reflection of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So turn it in is, uh, is, is available. available. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, so then we've established the fact that we can still move on from the analog means and then use the scientific approaches. Yeah. Yeah. But how difficult or easy mm -hmm. for universities to adapt some of these things? For example, you've seen the CCTV cameras in the universities mm -hmm. where... Um, you know, we have a lot of challenges mm -hmm. with internet, with electricity and everything. Mm -hmm. How do we come up um, strategically to adapt scientific means and approaches to solve some of these issues as well? Yeah, sometimes the, the, the cheapest thing mm -hmm. in the world is quality. Okay. But a lot of people rather think that quality is what? Expensive. Expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on, the, on this caveat, I want to establish that if African universities would want one their products to be of quality mm. number two that they would have a quality image and number three that their university would be competitive then they would have to invest in the infrastructure that is necessary to support what ict mm. or science mm. so electricity can go off from the national grid but generators are made available, available. Mm. solar energy is also what available, available. Mm. so these are all the issues that support ict Mm. in curbing academic corruption. I do agree that there are challenges. Mm. For instance, a number of African classrooms have very large, what? 
students. Students, mm -hmm. okay, all right. And sometimes, depending on the placement of the CCTV cameras, mm. you may not be able to even investigate all of the incidences. But of course, if attempts are made, upgrades would come mm. thereafter. So quality initially may look expensive, but mm. in the long term, it is the cheapest commodity that would exist for Africa's higher education. Great. I, I, I find these interventions very um, important, especially in higher education. But my issue is um, how do we get this message across okay, the continent, making sure that universities, academics, experts get to know of, of some of the new ways that you are bringing on board. I, do you have plans or in time past, have you had that opportunity to share with academics on various platforms as to how we can adopt some of these um, wonderful and insightful methods? Yes, absolutely. So I think that th these are more of a strategic things and organizations like the Association of African Universities have consistently done well mm. in bringing African intellectuals and uh, uh, practitioners of higher education sure. to expose to them new trends in what? Curbing academically dishonest practices mm. and then telling them to disseminate such, such when they go home. This platform is one such platform. Mm. Mm -hmm. The Association of Africa, now we are viewed throughout uh, the continent. Uh, the continent. Mm. And of course, the, uh, the, the, the coming into being of the Continental Education Strategy for Africa. Mm. Now, the first caveat says that it is going to hinge on the human resources of what? The continent. Mm. That alone means that the African Union understands that if academic corruption would still pertain in the African region, then we cannot make what? A headway because it's our human, human resource. Development, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Mm. So I think that that has been, but personally, I think I have done a number of works on uh, the issues of uh, academic corruption. Last year, I was at the International Conference on Quality Assurance in Higher Education in Cameroon. In Cameroon okay. yeah, I looked at the concept of academic corruption uh, at the, I think it was the 14th anniversary of AAU here mm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. I looked at the concept of academic corruption from different spec, uh, spectacles and mm. lenses. lenses. Uh, la, about three weeks ago, I was in Cairo, Egypt, when mm. I looked at the issue yeah, of sexually sexual transmitted. Uh, uh, I remember that one. Yes. Mm. Uh, just uh, about four days ago, I came from Ethiopia, mm. uh, speaking on rating classroom related academically dishonest practices of lecturers. Mm -hmm. I was assessing my, uh, I made students assess our peers, and this is of empirical evidence. It's mm. not a desk study. Mm. So, what students have said that was shared with our colleagues uh, who are into the higher education space in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Ethiopia. Mm. And as we speak, I have. Um, an invitation to speak also at the Association of uh, Examiners of uh, Examination Assessors of Africa, together okay. with West African Examination Council, will be doing some work related to what we are discussing here mm -hmm. next week at uh, Hilton Abuja. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, I also have an uh, appointment to speak uh, from 12th to 15th at the University of Western Cape mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, South Africa. in South Africa mm -hmm. uh -huh, on uh, a related. Uh, issue of academic corruption. So I think that um, as, as an academic, I am doing my part. There are continental initiatives by AAU, mm. by, uh, association, uh, by the African Union, UNESCO, and other key stakeholders. Sure. So if we all put our hands together at the wheel, we would work well towards achieving uh, collectively the continental education strategy for Africa. Great. So in terms of policy papers, you know, some of these things are, are, are policy-based approaches. Okay. So beyond the platforms that you speak, mm -hmm. um, changing mind, mm -hmm. disabusing the thought of people, mm -hmm. in terms of academic writing, getting your thought across, um, okay. even beyond the continent, how well are you able to do that? And let me even add the last one because of time. Mm -hmm. How well are you mentoring others or forming more or less like a clique or okay. a network of people who share the same mind across the continent to make sure that within the space of time, we'll get this message across to our universities. Well, I do a lot of writing. So if you Google me, you would find that I've done a number of writings on okay. uh, academic corruption from different lenses. Mm. Uh, as I speak with you, I think I have uh, papers in press, not less than four. The Journal of Business Studies is one. We have... Uh, um, um, the Association of African Universities mm -hmm. itself have, mm -hmm. have presented a paper which is under review mm -hmm. uh, as conference proceeding which mm -hmm. would come out at the appropriate time. You know more mm -hmm. than me because mm -hmm. it's your institution. Sure. I have another paper with um, uh, African high, uh, 
Professor Damtil's paper, what is the name, uh, journal, International, Ju higher, International higher Journal of high, uh, mm. uh, high African education. Higher Education, mm. I have a paper under review there mm. um, at the University of... Um, uh, University of Western Cape. Mm. I have sent a paper already. Okay. Uh, that is uh, the basis on which I'll be doing my okay. presentation. That's and good. my abstract has also been accepted by the West African Examination Council. Okay. Yeah, so if it also goes well, that is another paper. So some level of efforts have been done to put our thoughts in print. Mm. Uh -huh. Now, the issue of uh, mentoring others. Yeah, no academic succeeds without taking others along. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I have a team of researchers. I told you mm. with my paper that I'm doing with, um, that I submitted to the General Business uh, Studies. I did it with uh, Ab uh, 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 Abdullah. Mm. Uh -huh. Abdullah is also another young academic and we are working together on that paper. Um, by virtue of the fact that I supervise so many theses, mm -hmm. I'm imparting knowledge to the, so younger, the, younger, to the younger generation. Whilst we have uh, the likes of Professor Damtu, Professor Kebukola, Professor Shabani, mm -hmm. also mentoring, mentoring. us, uh, Professor Ehile, Professor uh, Mba, mm -hmm. all of them putting hands on us to ensure that we grow. We are also growing with a team of a network of younger academics that we can call peers, mm -hmm. whilst we are also lifting others so that they will take our space when we are gone. Great. Before you finally leave, let me ask you this question. Um, and you know your trend is very unpopular, That's especially true. in the in the areas of higher <laughs> education. That's true. When you make such presentations, um, can you share with us what are sometimes the critical questions and the critiques and what are um, I don't want to use the word opponents. You okay. know what are some of the opposing views that you have okay. because you are hitting directly on your colleagues okay. and the things that happen in your domain. For example, people just rise too quickly through the professorial ranks and, mm. and stuff yeah. like that. And these are the hard things to talk about. Mm. What are some of the reactions of change that you, 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 that you experience? Now, unlike regular corruption that sees immediate effect, mm. for instance, I have taken your money. Money. Mm. Okay, money that, I, that was supposed to be yours. I sign and I get it. Mm. Now, you feel it. All right, mm. money that is supposed to be used to build boreholes for the people of Upper East Region, mm. somebody takes it. The people of Upper East Region, what? Feel, feel it. it. Mm. So the reaction usually is aggressive. But for instance, a lecturer goes to lecture one hour instead of three hours. Sometimes students even get excited. Of so course. although mm. it's a corrupt practice, because the effect is not immediate, the reactions are seen as being what? Normal. Mm. Now, like the case of plagiarism, mm -hmm. you plagiarize, the question is, the regular question some, somebody without my kind of lenses will ask is, uh, but how does it affect the person you didn't cite? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they don't see anything wrong with it. So similar questions arise at conference. Uh, but this thing you are doing, it, it, it is normal, it, it, it is nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, and even let me, let me report, like um, in one of my, my, my papers, a lecturer in the United Kingdom speaking about the issues of uh, sexually trans uh, mm. grace. He openly said that uh, <coughs> lecturers, students come to lecturers all over the period seeking for assistance. So mm. what is wrong? Getting one of them to satisfy your sexual, sexual desire. uh, desires. So you see, he's thinking from a myop myopic viewpoint mm. and he has others who think along those lines. So we have a lot of these critics coming our way and we have a lot of questions coming our way on similar similar or related incidences of mm. academic corruption. But the okay. reality is that it's a research area and the more we get r robust at it practically and mm. academically, the better for Africa's higher education institute. Finally, mm. it is important to inform that if we don't care it, the doctor that takes care of you may be a product of what? Corrupt academic system. corruption. So mm he would treat you wrongly. Mm. The one banker who is taking care of your money may mm. put debit for what? Credit, mm. instead of credit for debit. Mm. And you may lose what? Money. The agriculturalist whose food you eat mm. may put so much fertilizer on the crop that you eat and get poisoned. Mm. These are all of the practical implications. <laughs> These are realities are already. Absolutely. Great. Of academic corruption. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Mm. Fedawa. You're welcome. And we want to encourage you to do more because um, for me, I think it, it's an unpopular field, but thanks, uh, you have taken that kind of bold step to make sure that we get the right things done and the quality assurance in our universities. Viewers, this has been AU Talks and we have been discussing um, how scientifically we
we will be able to curb academic corruption in African universities. We hosted Mr. Fred Awa, who is an international expert in academic corruption and also a lecturer at the University of Professional Studies in Accra, Ghana. My name is Chrissy Sam, and thanks for watching.